This is Optimal Living Daily Relationships, Episode 128, Seven Smart Yet Simple Ways to Handle Difficult People, Part 2, by Mark Chernoff of MarkAndAngel.com. Welcome, welcome. I'm Joss Marie, your host and personal narrator, and this is the show where I narrate to you every weekday from some of the best relationship blogs in the world, similar to an audiobook or audio blog. Today, I have the second part of a two-part post by Mark Chernoff of MarkAndAngel.com. In this post, he provides strategies he recommends for handling difficult people. So make sure and listen to yesterday's episode first to hear part one of this post, if you haven't already. That's episode 127. Also, we actually feature Mark Chernoff pretty frequently here on Optimal Living Daily Relationships. But make sure and check out Optimal Living Daily too if you'd like to hear Justin Mullick narrate even more of Mark's blog post to you for free. For those of you who may not know, Optimal Living Daily is another show in our podcast network where Justin Mullick covers posts all about personal development, minimalism, and more. If you'd like to check it out, just search for Optimal Living Daily from wherever you're listening to this show or come by oldpodcast.com slash listen. And with that, let's get down to business and start optimizing your life. 7 Smart Yet Simple Ways to Handle Difficult People Part 2 by Mark Chernoff of MarkAndAngel.com Number 3. Model the Behavior You Want to See When someone insists on foisting their hostility and drama on you, Be an example of a pure existence. Ignore their outlandish antics and focus on compassion. Communicate and express yourself from a place of peace, from a place of love, with the best intentions. Use your voice for good, to inspire, to encourage, to educate, and to spread the type of behavior you want to see in others. This, of course, is much easier said than done. It takes long-term practice. Even with decades of practice behind me, I sometimes catch myself being rude to people who are rude to me. I behave badly because they behaved badly. And even if the situation is absolutely their fault, my behavior only escalates the situation. So, I do my best to take a deep breath and set a good example of how to deal with anger and frustration. I try to be patient and compassionate with them to demonstrate a positive way of handling difficult people. And doing so always helps me make progress, even if it's not instantaneous. Number four, take positive control of negative situations. It's okay to change the topic, talk about something positive, or steer conversations away from pity parties, drama, and self-absorbed sagas. Be willing to disagree with difficult people and deal with the consequences. Some people really don't recognize their own difficult tendencies or their inconsiderate behavior. You can actually tell a person, I feel like you ignore me until you need something. You can also be honest if their overly negative attitude is what's driving you away. I'm trying to focus on positive things. What's something good we can talk about? It may work and it may not but your honesty will help ensure that any communication that continues forward is built on mutually beneficial ground. Angel and I build honest, mindful communication rituals with our students in the Love and Relationships module of Getting Back to Happy. Number five, proactively establish healthy and reasonable boundaries. Practice becoming aware of your feelings and needs. Note the times and circumstances when you're resentful of fulfilling someone else's needs. Gradually build boundaries by saying no to gratuitous requests that cause resentfulness in you. Of course, this will be hard at first because it may feel a bit selfish. But if you've ever flown on a plane, you know that flight attendants instruct passengers to put on their own oxygen masks before tending to others, even their own children. Why? because you cannot help others if you're incapacitated. In the long run, proactively establishing and enforcing healthy and reasonable boundaries with difficult people will be one of the most charitable things you can do for yourself and those you care about. 
These boundaries will foster and preserve the best of you so you can share the best of yourself with the people who matter most, not just the difficult ones who try to keep you tied up. Number six, make extra time for yourself. Difficult people who wallow in their problems and fail to focus on solutions are obviously hard to handle. They want others to join their 24-7 pity party so they can feel better about themselves. And you may feel pressured to listen to their complaints simply because you don't want to be seen as callous or rude. But there's a fine line between lending a compassionate ear and getting sucked into their emotional drama. If you are forced to live or work with a difficult person, then make sure you get enough alone time to relax, rest, and recuperate. Having to play the role of a focused, rational adult in the face of relentless moodiness can be exhausting. And if you're not careful, their toxic attitude can infect you. So remember that even people with legitimate problems and clinical illnesses can still comprehend that you have needs as well, which means you can politely excuse yourself when you need to. Angel and I discuss this in more detail in the self-love chapter of our book. Number seven, let them know that you respectfully do not care. This one is essentially a last resort. If you've tried your best to communicate respectfully with a difficult person or to gracefully distance yourself from them, but they insist on following you around and attacking you for whatever reason, it's time to speak up and tell them that their words are meaningless. In such situations, I challenge you to make this your lifelong motto. I respectfully do not care. Say it to anyone who relentlessly passes public judgment on something you strongly believe in or something that makes you who you are. And remind yourself that you did nothing wrong. Some people will inevitably judge you no matter what you do, and that's okay. You affected their life. Don't let them affect yours. Afterthoughts on good people and setting an example. It doesn't help to tame all the difficult people in your life if you're not ready to foster genuine relationships with good people. On occasion, you may find that the difficulties between you and someone else drain away rather quickly when you start being less difficult yourself. Honestly, I'm not trying to preach. This is something I'm working on in my own life. It's a lifelong practice. Make that first call. Offer a genuine compliment. Schedule a fun outing with another person's preferences in mind. Send that ridiculously funny text message for no real reason. There are tons of ways to nurture relationships with good people who are worth the extra effort and sacrifice. And when good people and good intentions surround you, it's amazing how unnecessary pettiness, toxicity, and difficulty simply evaporates from your conscious awareness. This really goes back to the point I talked previously about on modeling the behavior you want to see. Just as light will dispel darkness, your light can be a shining example to everyone around you, including those who mean well but don't realize their difficult tendencies. And even though you'll likely need to limit your exposure to some people, don't underestimate the possibility that your example may influence them for the greater good, one way or the other, in the long run. You just listened to part two of the post titled Seven Smart Yet Simple Ways to Handle Difficult People by Mark Sharnoff of MarkAndAngel.com. Thank you to Mark for letting us share his content so often here on the Relationships Edition of Optimal Living Daily. It's always an honor. And as I mentioned earlier, Justin Mullick also features Mark Sharnoff over on Optimal Living Daily, so make sure to check out that podcast too if you'd like to hear more from Mark. Simply search for Optimal Living Daily from wherever you're listening to this show or come by oldpodcast.com slash listen. And that's about all the time we have for today. Thank you so, so much for listening. And I hope to see you again tomorrow with a post from Gottman.com where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this podcast, but also Optimal Living Daily the show where I read to you from even more blogs covering finance, productivity, minimalism, personal development, and more 
from incredible bloggers like Derek Sivers, Zen Habits, Mark and Angel, The Minimalists, and all the ones you hear on this show too. So if you enjoyed today's episode and like taking amazing blogs on the go, come on over to Optimal Living Daily and subscribe to that one too. And together, we'll start optimizing your life. You've been listening to Optimal Living Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us. And remember, your optimal life awaits.